Okay, so we have a new OS for the Raspberry Pi 4. This is Endeavor OS Artemis, and it does look very nice. I've only just booted it up, and I've actually booted it from an x86 device, my little Melee mini PC. Uh, and the reason for that is that's how you create the ARM installer and then ultimately end up with a version that works on the Pi 4. So I'm going to go uh, into this operating system first of all, just to have a look at the operating system, and then I'll show you how to create the ARM version for the Raspberry Pi 4. So it looks very nice to start off with. So if we do Control alt t to launch a terminal, and then if I run NeoFetch, which is already installed in this, I haven't added anything to this at all. Uh, you can see this is running Endeavor OS, and it's 64-bit OS. It's an Arch Linux, because uh, it's running Pac-Man. The desktop environment is XFCE4. And as you can see, it's running an Intel Celeron N5105 at 2.9 gigahertz. That's the turbo speed, not the stock speed. So let's have a look at their website. So Artemis is launched. Latest features and downloads. Easy to use installer, which we'll find out in a minute. And uh, you can see here, eight desktop environments and one window manager. XFCE, Plasma, GNOME. I probably would pick Plasma, um, although XFCE may be a little bit faster on the Pi. I just really like the way uh, Plasma works and the whole environment. It just works much better for me. Five community editions, loads of information here. I'll obviously put a link in the description to this. Right, let's go back a bit and show you how I got this image working on this x86 device, which you need to do to be able to create one for the Raspberry Pi. So let's close that down and shut down the system. And let's start up. Uh, Windows 11 is on here as default, uh, and I've also got uh, on an NVMe drive, I've put a 256 NVMe drive in here, uh, which I've installed FidoS onto, uh, but I'm not going to use that for this video. And this is the drive that I'm going to install Artemis onto. Okay, so you need to head over to this page on the Endeavor OS website. Our new ARM install script is here with a 64-bit option for the Raspberry Pi 4B. So if we scroll down, you can see the Raspberry Pi Foundation kernel. The biggest change on our Arch ARM based script is that we offer the Raspberry Pi Foundation kernels for both 32 bit and 64 bit. I wasn't sure about this bit. It talks about 32 bit by default uh, because the 64 bit doesn't support USB storage devices. But looking at it, this is an older story. So it says here published January 21st, 2022. And uh, if you try and click on the link, this one here, you can't find the page. But if you just go to the Ordinary Downloads page and scroll down, you can get the latest version. So I downloaded this ISO from the German Mirror, one of the nearest to me, and that's now in my Downloads folder. And if I launch Raspberry Pi Imager, which is available from the Raspberry Pi Foundation and installs under Windows and Linux and Mac OS. So choose OS and scroll all the way to the bottom and use Custom. And then Endeavor OS, you can see I've downloaded it already and open, choose storage. So it's the only one that's showing up for me on here, which is the 32 gig SSD drive, which I've already installed it to, and then you would hit write. Now I've already written it, so I'm gonna reboot, and I'm gonna keep pressing F7 on this little Melee mini PC, which will get me into the boot menu, so I can select the SSD to boot Endeavor OS from. So let's shut down. And the device I need to pick is this one, ASMT. And you can see uh, there's a default image, so I'm going to go with that one, Endeavor OS x86-64. And that just loads up. And I get a message about my Ethernet, but I know it's working, so I'm just going to hit default. And this menu comes up. And the bit I'm guessing we need, because I haven't tried this yet, is Endeavor OS ARM Image Installer. So let's click on that and see what it asks me to do starting to install the Endeavor OS ARM image to your external storage device. So I'm going to put an SD card in. So start ARM installer. Ensure all apps are closed. Yep. OK. Which SBT to install? Oh, it comes up with Raspberry Pi 4, 64-bit. That's great. So I'm just going to go with the default EXT4. OK, so my SD card is uh, this one here, SDB or SDB1. Let's try SDB first. So on this line, I want to do forward slash dev forward slash SDB and then hit OK. And it looks like it's installing, hopefully to the right drive. So we'll come back when that's all done.
Okay, so it's all downloading and it's just untarring the image now. Four to five minutes. Okay, so end of script. Be sure to use a file manager to unmount the device before removing the USB SD reader. The default user is alarm and the password is alarm. The default root password is root. Okay, so any key. Uh, so rather than unmount, I'll just switch off. Uh, so let's shut down and remove the SD card. And I've just put it in my Pi 4 8 gig. And let's switch on. And that seems to be booting up all right so far. And it does boot up from my SD card, but then it gets stuck. Shortly after this, uh, it just stays on this screen and doesn't really do anything. And uh, I tried it on different Pi, so that was an 8 gig Pi. Uh, I tried it on a 4 gig Pi, I tried it on my other 8 gig Pi and uh, I just kept getting the same thing. And then I thought, well, maybe let's try the SD card in a USB SD card reader, and that worked. So I have my SD card in my SD card reader. Let's pop it in here. Uh, let's pop the mouse and keyboard in as well, and switch on. Let's give it Ethernet. And that's booting up. Go straight past that error that it had before and go straight to desktop. But we're not done yet because this needs to now customize this installation and you've got so many different options to choose from. So install official editions, install community editions. I guess I'm gonna go official first of all. Uh, it's probably safer. So welcome to Endeavor OS Setup. I quite like this, although it's a lot more hoops than you have to jump through for most operating systems on the Pi. You just install an image, boot it up, and you're up and running. So, uh, has it got British English? It has. I guess all this is pretty standard, so I'll skip past it all. Uh, so this bit's not, though. I think I'm probably going to go XFCE because it's a very, very lightweight operating system. I'm tempted to go KDE Plasma because I love it and I use it as my main operating system. I'm going to go for XFCE just because it's so lightweight. Do I pick it now? Oh, I pick it on the left-hand side. So it must be XFCE4 and next. Ah, oh, so we can choose KDE desktop as well. We could tick them all, but obviously that will take ages. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go with KDE and XFCE. So we've got the i3 window manager, again, very lightweight. Gnome desktop, which looks really nice, works really well for multiple desktops as well. Mate desktop, cinnamon. Yeah, loads of options, but I'm just gonna go with that for now. So it gets you to create a password, which is obviously much safer than using the alarm uh, and route that it had before. And a login automatically option as well, which isn't as safe, but I'm gonna put it on this. So set up now. And I believe what it does is overwrites the operating system that's already on there. We'll see what happens. This could definitely be improved by them just providing the image that works from a USB stick or an SD card. Uh, and then you go through this process. I wonder why they haven't done that. And especially with the Raspberry Pi, you often find those built into Raspberry Pi images. So you can just select it and install it. Because at this stage, you need an x86 device and some people haven't got that. So it's been on installing 69 packages and 40% for ages, but I think it's still going because the lights are still flashing. My ethernet light, my uh, SD reader has got a light on it, which is flashing. There's disk access. So I think I'll leave it for a bit. Oh, and it jumped all of a sudden. It went from 40% and uh, it just whizzed through everything. So all done. Endeavor OS has been set up on your new computer. You may now start using your new system. So let's do restart now. The start screen was KDE Plasma. How come I had an image and then it changed? Looks cool though. Okay, so we've got a cool welcome screen. And because it's done KDE Plasma, it seems to have defaulted to that. I'm sure I can log out and go back in as XFCE. But while we're on KDE Plasma, Choose one of Endeavor OS wallpapers. Let's try the dark one. <laughs> yeah, that's quite cool. Uh, I like the purple they've used on it. I think purple is nice for an operating system. So after install, update system, package cleanup, download more Endeavor OS wallpapers, configure EOS updater, logs for troubleshooting, default wallpaper. Yeah, very nice. Assistant, tips, add more apps. Let's close that down. And if I press the Windows key, yeah, 
So we might need to turn off compositor because KDE Plasma, um, certainly, yeah, that doesn't feel very snappy. So when I press the Windows key, it kind of takes a bit of time to come up. So I imagine we have to do exactly the same and turn off the compositor. So let's try that. Compositor, enable on startup. So we turn that off and apply. And let's restart that and see what happens. What happens if I press Control alt delete Yeah, nice. Uh, so then we can do shut down and I'll start it again. And the test with the Windows key. So if I tap it, yeah, you can see it's actually much more responsive now. The compositor kind of gives you extra effects and like blending and fades and things like that, but it definitely slows down on a system like the Raspberry Pi. So this just makes it feel much more snappy. So what have we got in here? So applications, well, that's all applications. Uh, so development, Kate, Meld, QT Assistant, uh, graphics, flame shot, screenshot tool, KDE image viewer, document viewer, and Resreto image viewer. Internet, we've got Firefox installed. Uh, the KDE stuff has gone in there so you can connect to an Android or an iOS phone, and also you can use the phone to control the desktop. I've shown that in my KDE videos. Drag and player for video. We've got a music player, Elisa. Another media player, Pulse Audio Volume Control, VLC is installed. Office, we've just got Ocular, so they haven't installed LibreOffice or anything like that, but that's obviously easy to install. Settings, System and Utilities. All looks really nice, uh, so let's try the web browser and see how well that works. So Firefox. So let's see how well it changes the audio. Uh, so if we click on this and we've got play audio via this device. Hopefully that's all we should have to do. So let's try YouTube, LPSB video HDR. Browser feels snappy initially. That took a bit of time to come up, but it is the first time it's launched. So let's go with 1080. Gives us the option of 4K and stats for nerds. And we'll go full screen. Doesn't feel as fast as Chromium. Okay, so eventually got there. So let's see if it's dropping frames. It is at the moment, you can see it. But maybe it'll settle down. No, it's still consistently dropping frames. It's a shame. Uh, straight out of the box, maybe uh, it's better with XFCE. So let's log out and see if it will give me the XFCE option. So if I click on here, maybe. Oh, look, so we've got Plasma on Wayland. It was on Plasma X11 then, uh, but we've also got XFCE as well. So let's pop my password in. So we get a different welcome screen, more relating to XFCE. And uh, yeah, I like the way they've uh, implemented that. So we pop down to the bottom here. Obviously, all the apps and everything are going to be the, going to be the same, but uh, it just presents it in a different way, really. So as you flick through, uh, you don't get the the Windows key option, which calls up the apps, and you can start typing. I can start typing now. So say, for instance, I wanted Firefox. I can start typing. You can see it finds it. In fact, let's launch Firefox and let's try YouTube straight away. I quite like the way they do this with the multiple desktops that you can switch between them. It's quite a nice, handy way of doing it. So I would install Chromium really because Chromium definitely works better on the Pi for me. I've asked it to do a search for Lee PSP Video HDR and it's, don't know what it's doing. <laughs> Not a lot. Maybe I close down some of these little hints and tips bits. Okay, let's just click on YouTube here. Oh, it's going to it now. So let's do the same. Let's go up to 1080 and I haven't tried to change anything on this. I'm just using it stock as is. So full screen. I mean, it's definitely not as fast as my build uh, of KDE Plasma, but I do use Chromium on that. And let's go for stats for nerds. And full screen. Oh, I, can, I mean, I can see it's dropping. I don't need stats for nerds. Okay, so in my experience, web browser, not that good. Uh, I would install Chrome on this, but uh, everything looks very nice. I like the feel of it and everything. Nice little transparency effect there. 
Um, so uh, yeah, great work, and obviously this is early days, but it's nice to see another operating system available on the Pi 4. I know it's been out before, but you had to, it was a more complicated installer, and this has basically made it easier and given you the latest version as well, which is really nice to see. Let's quickly do NeoFetch, uh, because that was installed in the x86 version, so I expect it to be installed in the Pi version, which it is. So this is the 64-bit version. I'm running at 1920 by 1080 XFC4. I was going to look at the config.txt. So let's do that. Is it going to be in the same place as it normally is on Raspberry Pi OS? It is, but it's it's really short. God, there's very little information in there at all. And I was wondering in here if it was going to have any relation to whether it runs on an SD card or a USB stick, because it looks like it defaults. I mean, only in my experience to um, booting from USB, but I couldn't get it to boot from an SD card in the SD card slot, which is unusual for a Raspberry Pi. Again, I'd much rather use an operating system on an SSD drive or an M.2 drive or even a faster USB stick. But uh, yeah, they put in this look, arm boost equals one, which is the bit that goes from 1500 megahertz up to 1800 but they've really kept this basic and on most operating systems you have loads more information on here. Loads of things where you can just get rid of the hash uh, and it enables that feature. But again, maybe that will change. And I see it says boot overlay readme for all available options. I wonder why they've done that. So it's in a different place. So let's try and paste that in. Raspberry config. Okay, so it talks about some of the options. Yeah, it's a slightly different approach. I think I haven't I haven't been that conscious of that before. So is Raspberry config in here then? No, Raspberry config isn't in there. Okay, so I'm definitely going to keep playing around with it. But uh, I really do like the operating system. I like the way it looks. I like the way it's very configurable at that start bit. Um, but I wish they'd maybe just make an image available that you can get to that point on the Pi straight off. Uh, because that's what we're used to on the Pi. And uh, obviously it's all the same platform, so it's, it's pretty standard to do that. But then you can customize it from there on. I would make a download available of that part uh, if they're happy if the team at Endeavor OS are, uh, are happy for me to do that, I'm happy to uh, put one up on Google Drive for people who haven't got an x86, but I don't know if, they're, if I'm allowed to do that or not. So, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. Uh, have a look on their forums and see if you can find out if there is uh, a bootable version that you can create just on a Pi just to be able to download. But great work, and I hope all this helped. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.